this is uh, Khayams Khaydemiller International Academy of Media Studies. Today, we have uh, called for uh, web discussions on elections during pandemic conditions, whether it will be fair if you conduct it. And the participants are uh, Mr. Ram, uh, the chairman of the Hindu group, Mr. Uh, uh, S.Y. Raish is former chief election commissioner, and Mr. Abu Saleh Sharif, former secretary, uh, so Rajinder Sitar Commission, Prime Minister's High Power Commission. Uh, the participants, Mr. Ram, as you know, he was a towering personality for uh, ethical and uh, uh, secular journalism in, uh, in our country. And he was a recipient of uh, various awards for investigative and uh, the recipient journalism. And uh, today, the, uh, the secular and inclusive world looks for him and uh, for his views on various subjects. Thank you very much, Ram. Dr. S.Y. Faraishi Saab, he is a formerly Chief Election Commissioner. Uh, in a very difficult time, he was heading the Election Commission. And uh, the, in the uh, world's largest uh, democracy, he conducted uh, the election during that time, which was considered to be uh, a yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, very difficult, and uh, he did it in a very fair manner. Uh, he is also a yeah, recipient of uh, various awards, and uh, uh, he is a torchbearer of uh, uh, his uh, democratic views, and uh, uh, he is also an author of uh, various books like Mr. Ram. Then we have uh, Mr. Abu Saleh Sharif. Uh, he, is, uh, uh, he was formerly Secretary General of uh, Rajinder Sachar Commission, a high power commission found by the President, uh, by the Prime Minister of India. And also he is a Chief Scholar at the uh, US India Policy Institute at Washington, D.C. Uh, and uh, he was president of uh, Center for Research and Debate in Development Policy, which uh, he founded uh, a couple of uh, two, three years back. Uh, it is with a sole view of uh, 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 to ensure the participation of all people in, uh, in the country. No voters left behind. And under that title, he was working hard to bring back all the missing uh, electorates and making them participate. And it was a national movement he was heading. He was also author of many books and uh, uh, he has presented uh, many papers. For I take this opportunity to welcome uh, all the three participants on this very important uh, discussions which we are having it today. Now we are seeing um, this pandemic conditions which is um, uh, in the, during the last one uh, century, we have not come across such a uh, condition. And uh, in the, the nation for the first time is facing such a huge, massive, catastrophic uh, uh, conditions. And uh, in this situation, uh, when, uh, uh, when the infrastructure, when the administration and everything is almost uh, at a very the lowest of all levels, uh, is it possible to conduct the elections in a fair manner and make all the people to participate uh, in this election? May I request uh, Mr. Uh, uh, A.S. Sharif to uh, uh, commence this discussion because he has uh, uh, led a big movement during the last two, three years. No voter is left behind. But he may be able to give us some valid uh, points and explanation. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Daud Bhai. And uh, it's a wonderful introduction. And uh, today um, I'm speaking here uh, with an illustrious uh, uh, panel, Ram Saab and Qureshi Saab. Uh, I respect them both. I read their works. Uh, and uh, they are relentless fighters for sustaining democracy 
um, making, helping democracy to mature, uh, not only uh, in promoting fair elections, uh, but also in many other respects, you know, to value uh, constructive criticism, so to speak, uh, where the policymakers lend a ear uh, to sensible um, uh, advisors, uh, which is what uh, uh, lacking, uh, at least for the last few years, five to seven years, uh, that um, the sensible voices uh, are not given adequate hearing. I hope uh, uh, Daud Bhai has taken this lead to organize this uh, Zoom uh, conference, uh, heralding uh, independent views uh, in, uh, in helping India uh, not only sustain, but also mature its democracy. And the uh, pandemic has thrown a, a new uh, uh, difficulties uh, pandemic is uh, uh, something which has no country, no set of people, nobody has ever witnessed in their lifetime or not even in the written uh, history, uh, mention of this nature, which has engulfed the whole world, has ever experienced. So it is entirely a new domain within which our democratic system has to prevail and sustain in future. Uh, without getting into the long-term impact of uh, pandemic on people, uh, which is a different topic, uh, now th there are many elections India has to face. You know, India has always been, you know, it is just not the five yearly national elections, but these are innumerable elections. Uh, we have 30 states, state elections, then the panchayat elections. It's a three-tier system on paper. I mean, even in practice to a limited extent, you know, India is the, 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 the example, the glory of democracy in the world. Uh, so far as the system allows people to go and choose their own um, leaders, their own uh, representatives. However, now this, this Zoom is specifically on should Bihar elections be uh, conducted, I think uh, they're they are right across the corner, uh, probably in November, I guess, um, uh, not very far from this impact of pandemic. Actually, pandemic has not seen any down, downward turn so far. The, 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 the pandemic is expanding, the numbers are expanding like a ladder. It is all increasing. It, India is the only country where there is an increasing graph going on continuously since the pandemic has been recognized. Now, given that situation, uh, what should be done elections? Because election means people have to come out of uh, homes. Election means uh, people uh, may possibly break uh, the rules of, um, uh, you know, uh, the WHO uh, mandated rules to save themselves. Uh, uh, you know, they have to stand in a queue. Indians are not very well known uh, to maintain social distance. There are many issues which will come into fore. Uh, so now, how should the Bihar elections be conducted? Now, the first thing which I want to highlight on this is, should, if they, should the Bihar elections are postponed, there could be a possibility because of the pandemic, it can be postponed. But that means that there would be a governor's rule in that state. Now, uh, as we know, um, the governors are not the elected representatives of the state. Governors are the, uh, you know, appointed uh, representatives of government of India. So postponement to me means that loss of level playing field for many political parties because the govern, governor's interference uh, in the name of conducting fair and um, fair elections, um, there could be an influence carrying forward from the central government. So this is my critique to begin with. However, pandemic is so uncertain, it is always worrisome, one has to find out 
not only in election system but in our social living in our social behavior the economic uh, system the work culture the community lives everything has to be redefined in future if not forever at least for near future and in my judgment that would be from 2 to 5 years we have to face the impact of uh, uh, assuming that the pandemic is controlled through um, immunization or through medicine assuming uh, at the moment there is no immunization there is no prophylaxis there is no uh, medicine there is no, no cure uh, but assuming that we get the impact will be for a very long time on social economic and community lives so is the impact on political lives so the mission of that every person every electoral every voter has to vote how can you implement that in this kind of situation to me we have to find out new electoral approaches in the event of uh the event has happened pandemic has happened now we have to find a new way i know that uh, already cabinet meetings for example uh, the 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 lok sabha and rajya sabha most of these meetings are being conducted online or we have seen some tv tv photographs where for example the prime minister sits about 8 to 10 feet away from each of the meeting members now this is only a symbolic uh, kind of situation because we have millions of meetings millions of um, uh, uh, work uh, uh, spots so we have to find a very very different uh, lifestyle so we need new approaches in electoral system also the migrants issue migrant labor has uh, thrown up a new challenge i am not going to at the moment elaborate on that Uh, there are limited travel facilities i know i remember in the past people used to go in bihar specifically because bihari labor used to work around uh, right now i'm in bangalore and around my home and uh, they used to take a um, very cheap uh, uh, normal ticket they used to go homes uh, when i used to enter why are you going back they say nahi sir election ho raha hai humko to vote dalna hai so people were very enthusiastic to travel long distance to vote Uh, in the past but now given the limited transportation system and also the cost factor because the the, the, the normal incomes have fallen uh, migrants have lost that opportunity uh, but uh, horeshi saab is here as the uh, 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 who was at the helm of conducting the national votes whether postal ballot system is a worthwhile um uh, you know uh, worthwhile alternative to the actual ballot uh, i know uh, postal ballots uh, they cannot be done on a single day there has to be a, a fair amount of time 4 uh, weeks 5 weeks 10 weeks it happens in a country like united states almost even before uh, before the election date uh, almost 6 uh, months before the voting uh, ballot voting system begins people are already voting now can we in india uh, adapt or uh, modify or use uh, a postal ballot system as a viable uh, voting uh, mechanism and uh, that is something which uh, i urge uh, uh, horeshi saab and ram saab to uh, to elaborate on this uh, similarly uh, voting can also be spread out over many days at the moment voting is done on a particular day uh, begin on a particular time and ends on a particular time uh, and i know there is a marginal extension done when the queues are long if the elections have to end at 6 o'clock because of the long queues uh, it will be extended marginally by half an hour one hour those kind of um, uh, 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 accommodation uh, our system does but can we think of actual uh, voting also in multiple days you know let us say four weekends if not every four day you know you can, we can think of that uh, not only postal ballot but also voting physical voting spread out over many days now and, uh, and also we can think of what we call the increasing the voting 
booths. So we need to increase the voting infrastructure. We already have a lakhs of booths, which we know. And Khureshi Saab in his book, um, the, the wonder, the election as a wonder, he has expressed in his book. Uh, I know many people have read that book. Can we increase the number of booths? Is it physically possible? How expensive that is? So, so my uh, 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 conclusion at, at this point in time will be, the, even the canvassing structure, the way we canvass, the canvassing is the, is the place where hundreds and thousands and sometimes uh, lakhs of people assemble, you know, depending upon the, the high ranking uh, uh, politician who is going to speak. For example, if a prime minister of a country is speaking, you will see lakhs of people assembling. Uh, and during canvassing, which can be disastrous. I, I conclude, this is my last two sentences. So we need a new mechanism of canvassing, which can be you know, uh, online, which can be uh, through social media, etc. But what we need to know is, uh, we need a level playing field for the contestants. The canvassing is um, uh, investment uh, related. So the people who have more money can do more canvassing through uh, uh, through uh, internet and uh, through online system. So there has to be some level playing field where every contestant should get. Uh, uh, but uh, in India, we have an unfortunate system. In some places, there are hundreds of people contesting for one post. One MLA, 100 people, 50 people, 25 people. Now, Horeshi um, Saab and others uh, we can be uh, modify this system and bring some sort of uh, you know, threshold where number of contestants can also be reduced. You know, given these kind of uh, uh, voting day uh, and uh, contesting situation modifications, in my view, we must uh, find out new ways of doing elections in India, notwithstanding uh, the impact of uh, coronavirus. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Sharif Saab. Uh, I have uh, some points. Um, on the discussions on the, which uh, you have made. Uh, I'll raise it uh, later, we'll discuss. Well, may yeah, I request uh, Mr. Ram to uh, come up with his uh, suggestions on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll be as brief as possible, uh, perhaps not taking up 12 minutes. First proposition is this pandemic is not going to go away anytime soon. WHO has made it clear there's no question of eradicating it in the foreseeable future. The hope will be eventually a pandemic scales down to an epidemic and an epidemic comes, becomes an endemic. That's the route taken by other, uh, many other viral diseases and Ebola and, uh, uh, and various other diseases and you got to manage around it. That's the point. So there's no question of putting off elections indefinitely till you bring the situation completely under control, let alone uh, till you eradicate the pandemic, because that's not going to happen. Now, looking at uh, the state of Bihar, which we are concerned with, uh, it, uh, in India, by the way, is uh, nearly 770,000, third after Brazil, US first in terms of number of cases. And the number, in terms of the number of infections, uh, it must be many times that. Internationally, WHO the chief scientist, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan has said, it's anything between 10 and 20 times the number of confirmed cases, that is the number of infections. So if 770,000 is the number of confirmed cases as of now for India as a whole, multiplied by anything between 10 and 20, you know, as, as uh, as was mentioned, uh, we don't know enough about it, but this is clear. Infections are many times the number of cases. Looking at Bihar, the number of uh, cases is, seems unnaturally low to me. It shows only 13,274 uh, confirmed cases, 107 deaths. If true, this is good. If true, for such a large state, such a populous state, assuming this is true or partly true, this is good news, although we must be prepared to multiply the number of cases when you come to infections. Um, and so in any case, elections have to be held. The state assembly elections have to be held. And if possible, before the expiry of the term of the uh, 
Bihar State uh, Legislative Assembly, which will be end of November. Secondly, this word was, uh, reference was made to authoritarianism. Let's not beat about the bush. We are living at a time of authoritarianism. Uh, this, there's no question about it. Decisions are taken on the pandemic at the center and in several states without consulting opposition parties. And the medical experts, many of them seem to be muzzled about what to do, which is why I think the situation in India has not been managed very well. Uh, even I think lots of specialists, experts, epidemiologists, uh, infectious disease specialists, I made that clear. But in officialdom, there, we have very ta talented uh, scientists, experts, medical scientists, clinicians, researchers, but uh, their, their role is still being uh, curtailed. Coming to the specifics here, I think this is dangerous. Without consulting opposition parties, suddenly the Ministry of Law and Justice, I think it's the government which has pushed it, it appears. The Election Commission has not, is not, uh, I mean, let me, you, you, Dr. Qureshi, you may not say it, I'll say it. It's not as independent and objective as, as at the time that uh, Dr. Qureshi was Chief Election Commissioner or uh, Mr. Naveen Chawla was Chief Election Commissioner. And there are good election commissioners before that as well, chief, chief election commissioners and other commissioners. It has been criticized. So the election commission should be able to say, we can't accept it. I need a clarification from Dr. Qureshi because under, uh, under uh, just one minute, under section 60C of the Representation of the People Act 1951, that's the statutory framework that the ECI has uh, invoked in replying to Sitaram Yachuri, General Secretary of the CPIM, saying that the commission has not used Article 324 for extension of postal ballot facility to specific class of electors. Then it quotes this uh, section 60 to say, provides that any person belonging to a class of persons notified by the election commission in consultation with the government. Here it's not on consultation of the government, under the government's diktat, is how I'll read it. Um, to give his vote by postal ballot and not in any other manner. So look, this is crucial, I think, uh, to, if, if we can get uh, Dr. Qureshi to clarify right away. Is this optional or mandatory? Uh, requiring uh, or allowing those 65 and above to use, will they be required to use only postal ballots? In which case, forget EVMs. <laughs> you, you know, a lot of work has been done with EVMs to provide for security and sick and the sanctity of the ballot. Uh, but that goes uh, out of the window. Uh, in the name of, uh, what is the justification they seek? Uh, that uh, the National Executive Committee under the Disaster Management Act 2005 has been issuing various guidelines, which inter alia included a, all persons of about 65 years of age categorized as vulnerable. I don't think all persons of about 65 are vulnerable. It depends on their health status, their comorbidities and so on. But still overall, the older you are, the more uh, risky it is, yes. But not all persons about uh, need to be categorized as vulnerable. And secondly, all COVID-19 positive stroke suspect persons to remain in home and institutional quarantine. So uh, the question is, will it, be a will it be a requirement or will it be an option for uh, those 65 years and above that they can't have access to the EVMs and they will depend on this, uh, on postal ballots and there are lots of uncertainties about uh, the security of those postal ballots. And also, it may affect turnout. Dr. Qureshi, would you like to comment on, uh, I mean, clarify yeah. for us? Um, well, I'll come back. You, um, uh, I request Mr. Qureshi, uh, so after you an answer to this, in fact, uh, uh, as appreciated by Mr. Ram, uh, we have seen uh, during his period, you know, uh, the, uh, the world's biggest democracy has conducted the elections taking uh, in consultation with uh, different sections of people decisions were taking. And today, we don't see that uh, kind of situation. 
So now we are uh, on this situation because we are focusing not on pandemics uh, now, but we are focusing on elections during pandemic period. So, uh, let us hear Mr. Suresh sir. Mr. Suresh sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much um, for the kind words. And, you know, uh, the uh, situation, as uh, we have all said, is uh, unprecedented. But the fact that many countries have already held elections in the last three months um, poses a challenge to Election Commission of India. Because if Korea can do it, India should be able to do it better because it has more experience. And uh, the, the Election Commission has repeated, they said that they are looking at the international experience and uh, they are trying to learn from that. So, and some of the suggestions which have come from uh, the, the election commission, the deliberation is that they are possibly looking at the increasing the number of polling stations so that the crowding at the polling station uh, goes down. They can even double the number of polling stations. Of course, then the problem is uh, whether uh, they will have enough staff. I personally feel that this, that will not be a problem because uh, the, the, the schools being closed, all the teachers are now available. Otherwise, there were restrictions that we would try not to take um, more than 25% uh, of the staff from the schools. But uh, since the offices are closed, the schools are particularly closed, uh, staff will be no problem. And the larger number of uh, polling stations means more buildings, which is no, not an issue because same school, instead of using one room, you use two rooms or three rooms. And uh, that is not an issue. The other issue which uh, Mr. Ram was pointing out about the postal ballot. Uh, in a way, Election Commission has a point that uh, uh, there, there is this guideline uh, of the, the, the uh, COVID authority that anybody above 65 is vulnerable. He is not even allowed to leave his door. He is not allowed to come out of his house. I am one of those who are locked inside the house for the last three and a half. Month. And this was done irrespective of the election, with no election in mind. So, um, not to follow that in the election, um, election commission uh, effort is always to follow all the laws uh, of the land. Right. In, uh, the, the, uh, what I was saying was that uh, the age of 65 in any case has been specified as vulnerable and people are not allowed to leave their houses. In such a situation, if election commission says that everyone above 65 has to stay at home and postal ballot facility will be offered to him or her, logically it will sound very justified. Because this restriction of 65 is not a creation of the election commission. It is a restriction which was put by the COVID authority the, under the Home Ministry and the Health Ministry uh, uh, weeks ago, months ago. So it's a, a part of a larger policy. Now, the, the finer point, the details, uh, how exactly will you ver verify? Already we have the postal ballot for the armed forces. We have postal ballots for the diplomats. We also allow postal ballots to election staff on duty who are on duty outside the constituency. Within the constituency, they, they, uh, they can cast their ballot uh, in uh, whichever polling station they happen to be. But outside the constituency, they use a postal ballot. So these are the three categories which have been using postal ballot all this while. Um, and postal ballot uh, has its own problem because we have only 13 days uh, for the postal ballot to be sent and received back. Because, you know, the, uh, the day candidates are finalized, all the nominations are final. Uh, scrutiny over, those who have to withdraw have withdrawn, and now we know the final list. That is the day when the ballot paper gets published and it is uh, immediately dispatched to the voters and to be returned within 13 days because the 14th day is the poll day. Now, um, uh, uh, the kind of postal service that we have in the normal course and uh, uh, many postal ballots don't come back in time. That is a standing problem. And particularly these days when postal service and courier service and all these services have broken down, whether the postal ballots will come back in 13 days is yet to be seen. 
one um, uh, alternative which was being uh, discussed for the last two three years under the supreme court order that look at the possibility of e postal ballot which means you send the postal ballot to you by uh, by email and uh, but then you take a print out and send it back by post which saves you half the time so but then uh, everybody in bihar will not be having a computer will not be having this facility so it is easier said than done now then the issue which was raised about verification of the postal ballot uh, who is authorized and he had to get a certificate now the, for for a military man he, he all he does he go to the co and the co puts a stamp where will these people go to get their postal ballots verified that is the question is still unanswered we need to know the answer personally i feel that the election commission uh, 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 i don't know how clear in their mind they already are perhaps they are uh, not yet they are still considering various options but in any case the considering the political parties have raised many questions um, they should call a meeting of political parties discuss the problem then find a solution jointly instead of unilaterally deciding something and uh, which may have Um, uh, lots of problem, and then just announcing it uh, ex ex party. Instead of that, let them call a meeting of all the political parties at the national level. They have said that uh, already political consultation has happened in the state. It may have happened at the lower level, but the, the uh, Bihar election is uh, not a small thing, and national parties are involved. And at the national level, the National Election Commission. They, uh, the, election commission of india calling such a meeting i think is highly advisable i'm sure from that meeting the problems will be spelled out and solutions will emerge i stop at this point for... yeah i think the in some hot spots or in some containment zones people about 65 are uh, what uh, are constrained as was mentioned or or uh, you know virtually trapped in their homes but in many other places it is not so people are able to go out there is relaxation in many districts in the state in some states don't have uh, cases even in tamil nadu uh, it's not uh, total uh, and certainly in bihar looking at the number of uh, confirmed cases it seems very manageable what they need to do is uh, you know follow the guidelines physical distancing everyone should wear mask uh, sanitize sanitize your uh, you know hand sanitizer size should be away, made available and they should be insisted on otherwise nobody should be allowed to come in and if you do that i don't think the risk is uh, is greater than what it what it would be without this without uh, you know using postal ballots because it will be it, it will be an insignificant difference it's not as though people are going to violate the guidelines uh, on a large or significant scale ensure that educate them the election commission should be given special funds to carry on an educational campaign uh, uh, for the for voters it's done a very good job in the past on many issues how to increase turnout and so on uh, and so i think uh, a lot can be done in this respect so i wouldn't give up the, the possibility of uh, having virtually everyone other than those special categories already there and perhaps people above 80 uh, which must be a relatively small number given indian demographics uh, to be able to come and stand in line and vote and you can even have special queues for uh, 65 and above uh, special lines in the uh, polling booths so people like dr kureshi can come up with uh, innovative ideas because experience uh, and and the grasp of details which we are not aware of we just talk about it we read about it we vote but we don't conduct the elections and that i think is uh, a crucial difference so you have uh, the election commission should consult the former uh, election commissioners particularly the cecs and maybe you'll get some good ideas to refine the process to make it safer that's my suggestion <coughs> rather than give up right off uh, 65 is now because uh, i i'm also personally involved because in 
I am now 75 and I don't have any problems uh, standing in line. Uh, I don't know what uh, Dawood Saab, how old he is. But he may or may not want to disclose it to, to the public. No, but uh, we, we will both be voting in Tamil Nadu uh, by May 2021. And then you have West, uh, West Bengal, Kerala, Assam and, uh, and Jammu and Kashmir, although that's an uncertain. Elect, uh, state assembly elections are due. In the case of JNK, it's, it's still a union territory. But uh, so a lot is at stake. So let's not give up on the, uh, on the 65 and above, 65 years old and above, when it comes to allowing them to use the EVMs. I have very quick, uh, because we are, we are uh, uh, I'm directing this question to Qureshi Sab for obvious reason that you were there at the helm and you know the internal decision-making process. But sir, tell me, in our country, now we are transforming most of our administration from a paper-based individual Hazri, you know, meeting person across the table to um, a online system, whether you are talking of um, uh, money, you, whether you are talking of uh, filing a police complaint for that matter. Uh, you know, we have progressed a lot. But why on the earth still we, our legal system and also our administrative system says that even when you have a voter's ID card, you have a voter's ID card, but that card doesn't make, is not enough to go and vote that the li local list must contain that name. So now the name of the local listing and the ownership of the card are two independent things in India at the moment. Yeah. So what I am urging is when we have fairly foolproof system of, for example, using OTP system through a registered mobile to draw my 100 rupees from my bank. So why is that those systems should be and must be tried, maybe on an explanatory basis to begin with in VR? Because as Ram Saab said, that more elections are going to come. West Bengal is around the corner. We have another Assam, I guess, is uh, not far enough. So we should allow the person having an authenticated voter's ID should be in a position to use the registered mobile and through a OTP system should be able to cast a vote from wherever that person is located, whether in Bihar or in Tamil Nadu or in um, you know whatever place the person is working. Why is that? Can we, I will not say why, but I would request, can we um, request the election system to start to begin trying with this, but, but mainly to merge the, that the voting ID should be the primary uh, identity for a voter to carry and to vote, instead of going and finding a name in a local, locally available list. So that would be, yeah. you know, this will open up everybody. It is just not the old people. It can open up a migrant labor who is not physically present in the, um, in the village or the, in the town. It can be anybody who is traveling. They all have rights to choose their own representatives. Okay. There are two separate issues. One is that you have the voter card and you are not able to vote because your name has been struck off the list for some reason. Right reason, wrong reason. But normally, what happens is that the, when the man comes, the booth level officer comes to your door, and the, the neighbors tell him that you are uh, you have not been living there for six months or more. So they will uh, uh, strike your name off, but after giving you a notice which is pasted on your door. Now the other issue was electronic voting. Although we are an IT superpower, we can uh, it is a child's play for us to introduce. Uh, internet voting, but in a country where even the EVM, simple EVM, which is not uh, nothing but uh, 
elementary calculator that is mistrusted and uh, people to trust the uh, uh, internet uh, because now uh, uh, despite the otp and uh, atm and other we keep hearing about but we also keep hearing about fraud of the atm we keep hearing of the banking fraud um, uh, but we cannot um, uh, afford to have a electoral fraud because even if a bank is looted uh, because of electronic manipulation insurance company will underwrite it but we cannot expect an election to get looted so which is why the uh, the whole world the, the most of the world does not use even an evm evm is a simple technology not depend uh, not controlled uh, from a distance not controlled by internet even that is not trusted in such a situation to think of internet voting is um, uh, unrealistic i i do not see that happening in the near for foreseeable future the thirdly the our uh, the voter card that you have is not a smart card all it has is the detail your detail your address and um, uh, uh, uh you are aid and that's all till we have a smart card which can be used and uh, sometime in the future it may happen but i think these are long time long term discussion right now we have to focus on bihar because that election is right on our head and uh, the issues which the mr rahm raised about postal ballot is the practicability now one question which uh, uh, will be foremost in my mind whether it is 65 years or 80 is the cut off point is that these voters also have to get themselves somehow verified what is that mechanism nobody has come forward with it we don't have the details yet so i think election can has to be more uh, 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 i would not like to use the word transparent but they have to be more uh, open about it and they have to involve political party um in a discussion personally my own experience has been whenever we had a problem we called an all party meeting and we uh, heard them with an open mind they came they heard us with an open mind and we were always able to find a solution because they are the people who have their feet on the ground they are conducting election they are doing the elections all the time and and i hope election commission uh, very soon will call all the meeting yeah mr farishi actually you uh, answered uh, uh, to the basic things and in fact uh, uh, the verification process for the 65 uh, years and above uh, as you said it is not transparent because uh, as per the uh, amendment issued by the ministry the old uh, verification process uh, for the special uh, voters you know it uh, it applies therefore uh, it, it's a very laborious process and for example a covid patient which is already declared by the designated authority or he is suspected by the designated authority he want to vote and if there is a special arrangements uh, he can go very well and he can vote or if he goes to the polling booth uh if he is given a separate uh, access then it, the matter becomes simple but if this man if he has to go through all those process to get it verified by not only by the covid uh, the by the authorities here the medical authorities by other uh, the revenue department authorities uh, to get his ballot paper verified that he is a genuine voter <laughs> it is a very difficult process and uh, and uh, like mr ram commented uh, made a point whether this is a mandatory or uh, for a uh, a covid patient for it's i'm uh, talking about the covid patient now who is suspected or he is already afflicted with this uh, is it a mandatory for him uh, to go for ballot uh, uh, paper or he can go to the booth and uh, cast his vote that is one question no, no my my question was on uh, on 65 and above not those who are tested positive no that is a special voter 65 and above now they are considering them as a special, special category yes. correct uh, yeah mr ram had made this question 
whether the postal ballot will be compulsory or it is it a facility which is being answered. Unfortunately, I don't have an answer because I haven't heard anything on that. Um, details that are still not available. If it is just a facility which is optional, uh, it's a, that's a good idea because people may like to go to the polling station. The fact that South Korea had a, a normal election held in April and had the highest ever turnout because people are also fed up of being locked down. They want to go out and when they get the legal valid opportunity to go out and vote, they used it. 66% uh, and above was the uh, turnout in uh, South Korea. I'm and sure. Sri, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is going to work. Have general parliamentary elections on, as you know, August fifth, uh, and it's That's a right. pretty high turnout usually. Sorry. Yeah, quite right. Yeah, yeah, but that is yet to be seen. But uh, South Korea is behind us. We have all, they have already demonstrated in fact that has become a global model. Everyone is looking at them, and you know the usual precautions of distancing, temperature control, gloves, and uh, masks, and everything. They did it. And uh, they did it so successfully that the turnout was the highest in 28 years. So if they can do it, my, to me, the challenge is if South Korean Election Commission with much uh, lesser experience can do it, Indian Election Commission with 70 years of experience and a great credibility, they can do it uh, much better. And, uh, and they have been examining the international experiences. There are 33 countries which have conducted elections in the last four months. And uh, we have to uh, learn from all of them, which election commission has been examining. Uh, but what uh, is the conclusion they're coming to? They should come out with it as early as possible so that uh, there can be a national debate on that, so that we know what we are in for. Yeah, I see there is a general consensus and there is no second uh, thinking on... Uh, uh, indefinitely postponing uh, these elections. Uh, maybe uh, a couple of months, because as if it is postponed, you know, like the medical uh, experts like Swamiya Swaminathan and other uh, uh, experts say, uh, this will take another couple of years because until the pandemic or then the epidemic and all those things, and we can't wait until that, and it will give rise to the authoritarian or it will develop the present authoritarian. To a, a larger extent, but uh, the election has to be held uh, on the due date. For example, the Bihar elections, and uh, for other election, at least we have some time. In case if any uh, a few months time, at least two or three more months time, and uh, my feeling is that it can be postponed to evolve a procedure where these uh, uh, where these points uh, for transparent elections are uh, uh, considered. And they are sorted out and yeah, very acceptable processes uh, evolved. During the last election, I just point out before others uh, step in. During the last elections, uh, out of about 92 crore uh, uh, Indian voters, uh, 66 or 67 percent uh, they voted. And uh, that forms about 23.4 percent of the eligible voters of the country. And uh, that means uh, they are not even. Uh, and also, the ruling party got 37 percent. That is 23.4 percent of the eligible voters. Only they 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 got the uh, votes, and uh, they don't even have the majority uh, of the mandate. And uh, in such case, you know, these people, if they are more people are being left out, and that will be more uh, uh, concern will be there, and if, uh, the process may not be a more a fair process. And another thing which Mr. Uh, Sharif, uh, uh, during his campaign, he pointed out, a big chunk of, a big percentage of uh, uh, people are being left out. And uh, deliberately they are being uh, left out from the roads, even if they had that epic uh, cards, they were not allowed to vote. And uh, he was leading a campaign. In fact, I also participated in uh, some places. Uh, but there was uh, still the elections went ahead. If those things are all considered, this 23.4 percent mandate there would be much lower than this. Maybe around 15 to 16 percent are still lower. And uh, therefore, the uh, there has to be a transparent process. And uh, maybe with uh, like you said, uh, with electronic um, EVMs uh, or a mixed process, uh, uh, it can be evolved, and uh, it has to be conducted. 
for in the next uh, i think we have we have very short time uh, for uh, if they come out with that if there probably there may be a uh, uh, discussions and uh, if they come out with the process we will also be very happy but i i for uh, sanif sahab and others if you have any questions or any it's for ashish sahab yeah uh, see one thing is uh, like uh, normal times all the effort during our elections is to ensure that all communities people living in different areas like in slums like in uh, uh, interior villages everybody has a right to vote and we have to increase the number of percentage of voting so my guess is i am not up to date but bihar is one of the states where normally the percentage voter voting percentage is higher uh, because uh, the way elections are conducted there um, the, the 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 zeal and uh, the motivation people have in voting uh, you know um, is very high uh, so but uh, now under the pandemic there could be a possibility that because of these uh, age issue whether uh, the old above 60 or 65 whatever age whether they are allowed to stand in the queue and vote or not and also you know election should have election objective is to make more and more people vote so that is our objective to do that you know and also uh, utilize the who and icmr mandated uh, uh, rules of distance mask you know i i was watching a documentary that uh, some of the european airports if they have to apply the who mandate you know just to fill up one air, aircraft the line has to be more than one and a half kilometer long you know you know what i mean just to fill up an aircraft an aircraft you know maybe 300 400 people are there but in case of our booths our booths are about 1000 voters that's what i presume but booths are also multiple booths are arranged let us say in a school so the school may have 10 booths or some in some schools i have seen there are many more so there will be thousands of people from all over coming towards the school where there are maybe 10 or 20 booths so now you see the number of people coming uh, over so so to me it looks that uh, that it is a very clear uh, opportunity for promotion of uh, pandemic uh, if we if we do not provide space now in india although india is a very large country with very land mass but when comes to living spaces it is one of the most congested country in the earth you know the reason why our pandemic is now expanding is expanding slums is because we you know we have uh, 5 10 20 people living in small spaces and um, so i know that that space constraint is going to get carried over to the booths also so bihar may be much 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 more difficult so i am just throwing up some concerns that um, will there be a serious problem uh, ram saab has given statistics that at the moment uh, bihar has very low um, rate but um, if we are not careful the pandemic uh, the incidence may grow disproportionately high in bihar the voting percentage was uh, 2000 the 2015 legislative assembly elections in bihar 56.8% and in the 2019 lok sabha election of all the major state, bihar registered the lowest uh, oh voting turnout about just over 50% so that's oh, uh, unfortunately so compared with 80% for west bengal and so on. west bengal so bihar is uh, on the lower so side so it is already low it is already so low yes Yeah, we yeah. have about uh, seven or eight minutes before we conclude. Yeah, there are uh, uh, some few questions. I said uh, we will allow. There are a couple of questions have come. I will take only three questions. Um, there is one question from uh, uh, Mr. Akbar uh, Bacha. 
why don't we go online voting facilities linking aadhar id and uh, it is uh, for uh, mr qureishi yeah uh, barbasha has uh, asked this question he's already yeah. answered that yeah. question i think <laughs> yeah so i already am the online I, is uh, will not be trusted at the moment okay so well, he is already the other question by uh, uh, shah jahan lakhs of voters are illiterate and uh, poor no access to smart phones with political muscle uh, pulls how can we ensure online voting <laughs> Dr. Kureishi has already answered that also. Yeah, <laughs> he has uh, already answered uh, this question, and uh, we have to develop a system. And uh, I think that is a, a transparent system. Which we have to keep improving the present system. Doubt, sir. You know, is postponement on the card? You know, we don't know yet. The because unlikely. the announcement has not been made. Would, as a political observer, I'd say it's unlikely. it is unlikely okay as a unlikely. former cec he may have a view but uh, it's uh, I, i don't think see the, the reason you mentioned governor's rule or president's rule governor's rule will be disastrous yes <laughs> see the figure of mr ram gave the voting percentage during the last election was somewhere in the 50s much lower than the national uh, average yeah. then yes. you you for a lot uh, with all the missing voters and then now the present situation with regard to the migrant voters all the people who were very much disgruntled with the whole system and uh, they may have, i doubt whether they may be able to vote and for the voting percentage may be much uh, lower if it is fairly calculated but uh, there has to be some proper uh, uh, methodology that uh, no uh, you know bogus voting or uh, these things are uh, taking place uh, during the election process and uh, second uh, there was one quote i read it in the, the you know, hindu newspaper uh, two or three days back uh, thomas jefferson's quote i think that applies here uh, not all the people are uh, who are elected are uh, uh, voted by the majority of the people uh, but only the they are the majority of the people who really vote that is the eligible voters but here we are going through the system for several years and where no where the the, uh, the ruling party you know it is elected by the majority of the people and uh, every time the uh, last time previous election 31 yeah. prachi sahab uh, presided now it is 37% of the old voters then it uh, when you calculate from the eligible voters last election 23.4 previous election was around 20 the so, boy yeah 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 can yeah, uh, your system where it has to be evolved where majority of the people and uh, they, they they elect the people i think the ruling party need to have at least 50% of the uh, eligible voters and such system has to be uh, developed and today's discussion it is just a beginning because for bihar election this statement has come there are as mr horesh sir said there are several issues uh, about the verification process are there which has not come out hopefully they may come out with that and uh, we expect uh, maybe they may might be a, in discussions to make it more fair or uh, if it is required and uh, a yeah, small postponement uh, not exceeding two or three months uh, can be considered that is my personal view and uh, every day we see different political parties and institutions are uh, objecting to the present circular uh, of amendment of the conduct rules which is issued by the government and uh, we hope uh that the world's biggest democracy comes out uh, uh rise to the occasion and to establish a fair uh, uh to elect a fair government at the states as well as at the center so can i conclude with this uh or you have any other comments to make but i thank uh, mr ram and uh, mr qureishi uh, and uh, mr sharif uh for taking part in these discussions and uh, we hope and if it is required that we may enlarge it uh, in the future with one more judicial uh, authority also and uh, who can answer from his point of view uh, from the point of judiciary and uh, i think the we will continue this discussion in future thank you very much thank you very much sir. thank you thank you thank you thank you very much